Hello everyone, Andy Wolverton here at Journeys in Darkness and Light, and today I'm talking about my fifth book in Raquel Stetcher's classic movie book reading challenge, and it's called Vertigo, The Making of a Hitchcock Classic by Dan Aller, with a foreword by Martin Scorsese. In 2012, Vertigo famously topped Sight and Sound's list of the greatest movies ever made, beating out longtime champ Citizen Kane. But is it deserving of that honor? I'll let you be the judge. But before you make that judgment, you should read this book. Now, you probably already know that Vertigo is considered Hitchcock's most personal film, but it's also a personal film for many others, including James Stewart and Kim Novak. In his foreword, Martin Scorsese says that morality, decency, kindness, intelligence, wisdom, all the qualities that we think heroes are supposed to possess desert Jimmy Stewart's character, little by little. I'm assuming that if you're watching this video, you've seen the film or know the story, so I'm not going to repeat it here. What we get from this book is a detailed account of the production of the film from the initial idea based largely on the novel D'Entrée de Mort by Pierre Boileau and Thomas Narcissac. Aller also covers finding the right setting, actors, writers, and more. Now, Stewart was an easy pick. Hitchcock had worked with him previously on Rope, Rear Window, and The Man Who Knew Too Much. But Stewart's screen persona had been growing darker and darker since the end of World War II. Fans of Westerns knew this, watching Stewart's roles in the films of Anthony Mann, such as Winchester 73, Bend of the River, and The Naked Spur. For the female lead, Hitchcock wanted Vera Miles. When he learned that Miles was pregnant, he took a chance on a relative newcomer, Kim Novak, and there's quite a bit about her in the book. Hitchcock was always about control, and one of the book's strengths is showing how he behaved and worked differently on location versus in the studio. What Hitchcock couldn't control, however, was the audience response to the film and what happened to it after its initial run. If you don't know the story, and I didn't fully know it before reading the book, it's fascinating and makes us rethink how films are handled and marketed today. The book includes photos, reproductions of official documents and letters, and several storyboards showing how much Hitchcock relied on them for his films. Many of you watching will remember the hot debates that went on after that 2012 sight and sound poll which took Citizen Kane off the top spot, replacing it with Vertigo. That list comes out every 10 years, and it's about to come out again in November 2022. So we'll see if Vertigo will remain number one. Even if it doesn't, I consider it a masterpiece. It's one of my favorite films of all time, and whether it is or isn't one of yours, you'll gain a tremendous amount of knowledge and enjoyment from reading Vertigo, the making of a Hitchcock classic. Thanks for watching.